Alright, let's use our successive integration to do a Laplace transform of a polynomial. And you can see that the successive integration formula has changed. Now we have our bounds from 0 to infinity. And e to the negative st is now our g of x, and that's going to be a constant. It's always going to be like that. And our function here is going to be f of t dt. So we're going to use the same method we did before where we choose a u and a v based off of our f of t function. And let's say that this time our f of t equals t cubed. t cubed is a algebra term and we know that taking enough derivatives of t cubed we will eventually get a constant. So we're going to choose our u term to be t cubed. That leaves e to the negative st as our v prime. All right. Now we need to plug our u and v into our table below. And u is t cubed. And v prime is e to the negative st. So let's take our derivatives of t cubed. We get 3t squared, 3 times 2t, 3 times 2 times 1. All right. Now, you can see when we take derivatives of any polynomial function successively like this, we're always going to get an n factorial term where n is the degree of polynomial we have. So e to the negative st has integrals e to the negative st divided by s, and that one is negative, e to the negative st divided by s squared is positive, e to the negative st divided by s cubed, and that's going to be negative. So let's choose an n. So we can see that for any polynomial term, you know, we want to take the amount of steps required to get to a constant term, which is 0 step, 1 step, and 2 step. So we could take n equals 2 and do this formula out and get 3 terms or I want to show you a different way and and that step only requires the zero step alright so if n equals zero we come down and fill this formula out so it's k equals zero to zero we get u to the zero order v to the zero order integral from zero to infinity equals integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative st well f of t was t cubed right dt plus integral 0 to infinity of u to the 0 plus 1 which is u to the 0 that's going to be this one right here 3t squared and v to the negative 0. That's going to be this order right here, negative e to the negative st divided by s. dt. All right. Now, let's evaluate the left side. And we can see that this is going to be an improper integral, which means we need to take the limit as h goes towards infinity of our function now what is our function for u0 and v0? Well u0 is t cubed and v0 is e to the negative st divided by s and it's negative. So evaluate that from 0 to infinity and that negative is coming out here as well. Okay. So because h tends towards infinity, we can replace h here, and that way we have a real valued function for our integral. This goes to limit as h tends towards infinity of negative h cubed divided by s e to the s h plus 0 cubed divided by s e to the zero. 
So we can evaluate this limit by direct substitution of infinity to get negative infinity divided by infinity plus zero. All right, so when we have a negative infinity or over infinity situation, um, or infinity over infinity, or infinity over negative infinity, it doesn't really matter. We can use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, now what we do there is we take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator separately until we get something other than infinity over infinity. So we can see that we can take three derivatives of h cubed to get 3h squared and then we get 2h and then we get 1. That's going to be divided by s then we take e to the sh and take a derivative on that, which is going to be s times s e to the sh. Then we take another derivative, get s e to the sh. Then we take one more derivative and we get s e to the sh. So now we can see that we have a constant term on top, which is 3 factorial, and we have s to the fourth on the denominator, still times e to the sh, all right, and this is all still taking the limit as h tends towards infinity. So we have 1 over infinity equals 0. Now we can see that the left side is going to equal 0, and we're going to have this term here, and we can see that this is the integral we started with. Alright, f of t equals t cubed, so that's going to equal the Laplace of f of t. So this is the Laplace transform of t cubed. Alright, now we can take 3 over s and take it outside of the integral. Integral from 0 to infinity of t squared e to the negative st dt. Now this integral right here is kind of interesting. What we can do is say that this is really the Laplace of t squared. Now why is that? Well, it's because we still have an e to the negative st term, and the integral is still going from 0 to infinity. So by our definition of the Laplace transform for f of t, here our f of t now equals t squared. So to complete this, we have 0 equals Laplace transform of t cubed minus 3 over s Laplace transform of t squared. So let's solve for what we were originally trying to solve for, the Laplace of t cubed. All right, so we found this answer by taking the derivative on t cubed, and that derivative had a constant of 3. We took the integral of e to the negative st, and that had a constant of 1 over s. So if we took the Laplace transform of t squared, then by the same method we got the Laplace transform of t cubed, we can say this is 2 over s times the Laplace transform of one order lower, which is t. And then if we took the Laplace transform for t, we would get 1 over s the plus transform of something one order lower, which is one. And then Laplace transform for one is still one over s. So what we have here, if we combine everything here, we have Laplace of t cubed. And now let's take this function and put it into here. It's equal to three over s times two over s times 1 over s times 1 over s. So we can see that this equals 3 times 2 times 1 times 1 divided by s to the fourth, which is the same thing as 3 factorial divided by s to the fourth. Now we can see from a Laplace transform table that the Laplace transform of t to the n is equal to n factorial divided by s to the n plus 1. 
Now we can see this is the same thing because we had an n equals 3 here and we got 3 factorial divided by s to the 3 plus 1 which is 4.